Jeff Johnson with St. John's United Church of Christ coming to you from beautiful Albright's Woods in Orwigsburg. And we're blessed with a good day today and we'll be beginning worship in less than a minute.
morning, one and all. Good morning. I'm just checking to see if you can hear me. Would you like a little louder, or are you? You're going to be okay. Okay. Well, I'm sure you'll let me know. Uh, and good morning. Good morning to all of you here, as we've gathered at St. John's United Church of Christ. As we always do, the location is just a little different. We're outside at Albright Woods in Orwigsburg, and as I said somebody earlier, I think every few years we are certainly deserve to get a, a, a perfect day of weather. So this is it. <laughs> and this last time we had a, a hurricane wind, it seemed, come through here. That was a shock. Not today. Special greetings to those of you who are with us on Facebook or on YouTube, and uh, we'd love to hear uh, a little good morning or a comment from you. That way we'll know that you have joined us for worship this morning. You're welcome to use the bulletins. We have the screens, if you can see them, and uh, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship. until the final hymn, and then we will, if you're able, stand for that. Uh, lifting up our joy. We always want to make sure that if someone has a joy to share this morning, they'd have an opportunity, because we'd love to hear it. Would there be a joy? The lady in the back. That would be Susan. My joy is that you're all here and have brought absolutely yummy foods, desserts, we always love will be on this table. The hot food will be on that table. So we have desserts and drinks here, and I, I thank you all, and so does Parish Life. Always show up and feed us well. So thank you. Yes, and thanks to all of you on that. Linda. Well, today I am married to this wonderful man of 35 years. Uh -huh. <laughs> This is both our second marriage for both of us. This man can cook a good meal, can clean the house. There is nothing he can fix. I think we've had a repairman to our house five times in 35 years. And he has been an absolutely wonderful father. Our daughter knows that. 
loving wife is just the, uh, uh, the love of my life, and I try to change and have someone to share life with as a friend. Thank you. And I want to, you're ahead of us. Uh, Irma and I celebrated 30 years of marriage this past week. And, and she definitely is unique, special, and wonderful. And I've been blessed, uh, I know I've been, for 30 years to, to have her with me in worshiping in various places and especially now here in Orwicksburg. So, any other, any other, uh, we do, uh, yeah, Brenda? I just wanted to thank Jamie for being our chauffeur, chauffeur and um, extraordinary travel agent. My cousins from Italy came in, um, and we spent the entire week with them, running here, Niagara Falls, everywhere around here, to show them around. They had a fabulous time, and I just wanted to thank Jamie for all his help with that, and yes. thank you. God for blessing you with such a great family. I saw a hand in the, the gentleman over there. I don't know about the gentleman part, but um, I can't beat those stories. It's really good. I was coming down 81 South last night, and there was a uh, car with a U-Haul trailer in front of me in the distance, and it swerved. I was going, oh my God. And then across the way, it's a divided highway, so across the medium in front of me runs a family of raccoons. <laughs> right? Raccoons go one by one as they cross the road. I don't know why they do that, but that's my observation of them. And they're running across from me, and I'm sitting there going, okay, I've got this like huge van, and I'm driving at 65 miles an hour. And I certainly don't want to hit the tractor trail who's next to me, and I don't want to hit the raccoon. The story is basically God put that raccoon family one here, one there, and let my van go through and then follow through and not, not one of the raccoons got hit. Oh. <laughs> so, that was a joy. That was definitely a joy, that part of it, for sure. <laughs> yes, Judy. One more. Bob Miller will celebrate a birthday tomorrow. I won't tell you how old he is. <laughs> the peace of Christ one to another peace of Christ be with you and you and you all around we certainly need his peace and so uh, join me uh, reading responsibly the call to worship for we are called to follow Jesus and following Jesus isn't easy no it will demand our dedication and our energy it will change our Come, all of you, come and learn of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we come to see your wisdom Let's bow for a word of prayer. Dear God, help us this morning in this beautiful outdoor setting to feel closer to you. We come here from many places and circumstances, but we all need a fresh dose of your love. Enable us through this time and our fellowship together to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and to follow you more nearly. Amen. Amen. And if you will now join me for the prayer of confession. Lord, it is easy for us to say that we will follow you and then turn our backs and act as though our commitment to you does not mean anything to us. Jesus challenges us to take up our crosses, and when we don't understand what that means, we just shrug and turn away. Forgive us for our lack of commitment and faith. Heal us of our greed and fears. Give us courage to be disciples, and enable us to joyfully proclaim your healing mercies and your transformational love.
Receive the healing love of Jesus. Give your lives to his service by serving and caring for others. And be at peace. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for today. First one is from Isaiah 50, verses 4 through 9. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. And then our gospel reading today, from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 27 through 35. Mark, chapter 8. Jesus went with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter, said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Well, have you ever been involved in a conversation with people and not know what they're talking about? but you're too embarrassed to ask. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm one of those. It seems to happen more often these days than it used to. Tom Peters is a, a well-known business coach, and he's written a lot of books, including one that's uh, in the last year, full of quotations. It's a great book. I, I, I haven't bought it, but I've read part of it. He says, ask questions, even what may seem to others to be dumb questions, for asking dumb questions is a lot easier than correcting dumb mistakes. Did you get that? <laughs> There's a Chinese proverb that goes like this, ask a question and you're a fool for three minutes. Don't ask a question and you're a fool for the rest of your life. Well, Jesus asked a lot of questions, and, and perhaps the most important one, the one that comes to mind for me is this one. Who do 
people say I am. A lot of times, and maybe you've met people like this, they ask you a question because they want to teach. It's, it's a teaching moment, so they're going to ask you a question. You get the wrong answer, then they can teach you. Well, his disciples replied back to him. Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. But what about you, he said, who do you say that I am? And it was Peter, of course, who answered because he was always quick, quick to say something in those situations. You are the Messiah, he said. But when Jesus told him that the Messiah had to die, Peter, as it says, rebuked him. Right answer, wrong conclusion. Right answer, wrong conclusion. As you've heard before, people's, people's views of the Messiah was one of a political figure who would free the Jews from Roman control. It had all everything to do with the current problems in that nation of Israel at that day and time and place. But Jesus' mission was so much bigger and beyond all of that. It wasn't simply to deliver the nation Israel at that time and place. It was to deliver humanity. Everybody. <laughs> that couldn't be achieved by it. getting a small group together with, with arms and go out and fight a battle. The whole structure of human existence needed to be changed for this work to be done. His disciples didn't have a clue what that would entail. That would be thinking way out of the box. And I'm with them because I could understand that. Missing the point because I'm thinking in this narrow area. We think in earthly terms. Jesus taught in spiritual terms. Jesus said he had to die. Peter couldn't reconcile his view of the, the Messiah with rejection and suffering and death. That did not register well with him. I wonder how often we might do that. Answer the question right, but draw the wrong conclusion. If I were to ask each of you who, who Jesus is, you could say possibly, you might say, He is the Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. And if I were to go on and ask who loves you more than anyone in this world loves you, more than your parents, than your children, or your spouse if you have one, if you, I'm not a doubt that you would say, Jesus loves me like that. Right answer. But would we get the conclusion right as well? See, if Jesus loves you more than anyone on earth, what would that mean to you and to me? Does that mean that God will place an invisible shield around you and, and I and those we love and that nothing bad will ever happen to us. No. Although, I don't know if we've ever really confronted that, that truth. A well-known pastor tells a story of a friend of his. He had a, this friend had a daughter that they were raising who was uh, had serious brain damage. And um, the friend told the pastor this. She said, I can hardly bear it sometimes. My most recent wave of grief came just before her 16th birthday. As the day approached, I found myself brooding over all the things that she would never be able to do. What did I do? What I've learned to do again and again. 
I did what I believe is the only thing to do to conquer grief, and that is to embrace it. She said, I cried and cried and cried and faced the truth of my grief head on. Many of us have known that kind of pain. Were you able to face it head on? That's a tough one. And how did it affect your faith in God? Were you able to hold on your knowledge of God's love for you, even in the midst of, the, of, of a tragedy? That's not easy to do. Even someone with a mature faith struggles. But you see, we know God loves us more than we can imagine someone loving us. But what does that mean? It doesn't mean, although I still pray for this, that God will place an invisible protective shield around us and those we love so that nothing bad could take place. Indeed, some of us have learned about God's love through the toughest of times. Somebody said once, tragedy is a great teacher. I read an article about the famous astrophysicist Dr. Stephen Hawking. Does that name ring a bell? He, he, he passed away in, in 2018. But many of you may, may remember seeing him. Uh, many called him the most intelligent man on earth. Dr. Hawking had ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. And it eventually took his life, although he lived far longer than anyone would ever have dreamed of. But if you remember, he was confined to a wheelchair for years, almost totally paralyzed and, and kind of wrapped up in a, what appeared to me, an awful position. And all he could do was to sit and think, and he did. He lost the ability to speak, but he was able to communicate by means of a computer developed just for him that that was operated with the tiniest movements of the fingers. Fingertips, I should say. Otherwise, he couldn't do anything. Nobody would want to be in that position. He said that before he became ill, he didn't have much interest in life. He called it pointless. He drank too much, he says. He didn't put much effort into his work. And then he learned that he had ALS, and he had no more than two years to live. For him, after that initial shock and the, and, and the grief of all of that whole thing, the effect was actually, for him, he says, quite positive. He claimed to have been happier having ALS than he was before. How could that be? When one's expectations are reduced to zero, he said, one really appreciates everything that one does have. To put that another way, contentment in life is determined in part by what a person anticipates from it. To a man like Hawking, who, who, who thought he would soon die, everything took on a different meaning. A, a, to, to, to see a sunrise or walk in the park while he could still walk, or the laughter of children. Suddenly each small pleasure becomes precious. The people around us become precious. By contrast, those who believe life owes them a free ride are often 
unhappy with, with, with the finest things. See, it's easy to come up with the right answer, but to draw the wrong conclusion. We say, I'm God's child, so the future ought to go my way. On the other hand, people for whom things seem to go their way are often quite miserable. Peter proclaimed Jesus the Messiah but didn't like his conclusion. We're capable of that too. Jesus is the Son of God. He loves us more than anything else, more than anyone else will ever love us. So trust Him. If you go through time of trial, trust Him. If you go through a time of suffering, trust Him. You stand at the door of death or if someone you love is there trusting until the time comes when more will be revealed to us as I'm sure it will let's trust him and he'll see us through Amen Join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified and died in the Spirit. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to us who live in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So at this point, we usually take our offering. I want you to know that we have an offering plate here this morning. For that part of our worship is always necessary for us to get the full picture of our relationship with God, including the giving part. And so I will just remind you now it's here. And any time that you feel led to do so, you are welcome to give us your offer. Squeaking uh, Peter Totter and the birds. It's, it's really neat. There's life going on around us. So we're praying for each other and we will continue to do that. Thank you for those who see the prayer list on a weekly basis and may use that, incorporate that into your times of prayer at home. I will mention a few prayer needs here, but uh, know that of course there are plenty more, and then I will offer the opportunity if anybody else would like to add any. Um, we offer our prayers today for Ruth Ann Boyer, 
and uh, she is now uh, receiving physical therapy after a fall. So we keep her in our prayers for her recovery. We continue to keep uh, family and friends of Susan Kramer in our prayers. And of course, that includes Tom, Jared, Jenna, Gracie, and Clara, and extended family as well. Tim Ditzler, remember him in your prayers if you would. Dealing with health issues, and I believe he is back home now, but uh, we pray for him and his wife Elaine as well. And we keep uh, Fred Bender in our prayers, viewing our service from Florida this morning for his health as he continues to receive treatments for cancer. Are there others this morning that you would like to mention? Please, please feel free to. Yes. I keep Arlo in your prayers. He was hospitalized for four days this past week, just dealing with some reoccurring symptoms that we dealt with last year. And just trying to get some answers. Okay. Is he home now? He's home now. Okay. Uh, Jen's asked us to keep Arlo in our prayers. Had a, a brief hospitalization this past week to get checked out for some things, and uh, so we we hold him up in prayer and his family. Yes, Stephen. Yeah, brother-in-law uh, Arnold Berger is just continuing to fight his battle with his damaged spine. This week we found out his arms are going numb, so the advantage is obviously pursuing, continuing to keep him in prayer. Arnold Berger, yep. we we'll continue to keep keep him in our prayers. He's on our prayer list, and he is <laughs> Deb's brother. Anyone else for sports? So we will have prayer followed by the Lord's Prayer. Thank you, God, for the gift of this day. As I said earlier, we come from many places and circumstances. But we are here or we are viewing our service online this morning, and I believe we are open to your Spirit's work in all of our lives for health, <clears throat> for healing wherever it's needed, for a hopeful spirit wherever it's lacking, and a closer walk with you in addition, we offer prayers to those who are dealing with recent death of loved ones. Peace of Christ. For those that are recovering from surgery or in physical therapy, trying to regain their health after a, a rough patch. For those dealing with cancer and all the aspects of it. And many, many others we raise to you this day for peace, for hope, and a better day to come. We pray for peace in this world that is severely lacking in many places, as we know. We pray for your, your very best and the very best of people for a greater understanding one to another for the message of Christ the mission of Christ to be further here and everywhere and we pray in the name of Jesus our Lord who taught us to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'll ask you to please stand, if you're able, for our closing hymn. unto you. May the Lord lift up his confidence, his face to you, always giving you peace until we meet again. Amen.